Welcome to Texas Truck Channel, I'm Brian, and today I'm flying a little bit solo because Craig is busy with a cat knitting convention. Don't ask me, he's a busy guy, he's gotta keep with the times. So what I'm gonna to cover today is the Jeep Gladiator build. We've been talking about it, we've been teasing it, and if you've been following along, we've shown you the truck, we've introduced it, and we've already gone up the hill with it and shown that it actually gets some things done, but there's a few drawbacks. But beyond its capability, it drags its belly and its traction limited with those tires. So today we're going to follow the same mindset of cheapness. We're going to see how cheaply can you get something that is extremely capable for the dollar. $31,000 for the truck and then how cheap are these mods we're going to talk about today. We'll cover that at the very end of the episode, but let's get into what we're going to cover. First things first, you can't go off at all without light. So let's get that covered. Boys, come on in. I've got some helpers today to fill in for Craig. We've got the Hella 500 series lights and they can read and these are how you mount them. And let's cover these really quick. These guys together are less than 150 bucks on Amazon. Um, we've got them on Black Friday for a little bit less, but that's the going rate right now for this setup. Okay, so the theme of this thing is black and white, and that's close to black and silver. We're gonna run with that, that's the logic. Also, it's the price mostly. But it is a big size uh, light. It's about the size of my face, which is just what you want for, you know, adding inches. Um, and most importantly, these are not LED. We did not want a super bright, out of place LED design. We wanted to make sure we had a halogen bulb to match the rest of the lighting package because we don't have a budget to do headlights and fog lights as well. So let's pop this cover off because you can't run with too many elements in most states legally. And so, yes, is that true? Okay, and there you go. You can see right there that it is not a bright white. It's actually got some smoked lens to it. I'm really happy with that. That's pretty cool. I can't remember the name. We got them on Amazon. They're all over. You can find them. There's a ton of mounts that mount to the windshield bracket on the JL and JT, meaning Gladiator and Wranglers. That's the beauty of this truck is the front half is just a Jeep. Yep, Gerbo. J-E-R-B-R-O. Gerbor. Gerbor? I don't know. These are anodized. They are just silver. I think they look better. You can get them in red and different colors. There's a lot of options for these. About 20 bucks. Really clean way to mount them. Hmm? I think I can read it correctly. You think you can read it correctly? What does it say, Henry? It. Gerbor or Gerbo? It. Gerbor. Gerbor? Okay. Henry, it's, it's official. Henry called it Gerbor. Okay, we got it. Set those guys aside. That's the lighting package. Now you'll fit in at Whole Foods and everywhere else. All right, next up are springs. Hand me those, buddy. Oh, big boys. Okay, good job. These guys right here, these are Rubicon springs, Henry. And more importantly, they're off of a diesel Rubicon, which means the front spring is designed to hold about three to 400 pounds more weight. And also the spring rate consequently is about 10% stiffer than the regular gas Rubicon. Now, the internet will tell you all kinds of things about this. Mostly that these will ride awful on a two-door lightweight Wrangler, um, but no one gives you a good answer if this works on a Gladiator. We're gonna find out. I feel like if you're gonna do a winch bumper and a winch up front, this might be a perfect alternative to an expensive or paying for springs because these were free. Thanks, Michael, for helping the show out with that and chunking these in there. Um, Moral of the story is, there's a lot of free parts in the Jeep community. This might be perfect. This should lift it at least an inch and a half. We're gonna measure before and after and let you know. All right, that's one of two free mods. The other free mod are the rock rails that we've already put on the Jeep. They came off of Rubicon. They were free from Marketplace as well. Glad to have those for aesthetics alone, plus protection. Now, the other issue we have is traction. Let's bring in the wheel and tire. Oh. Okay. This one's a bit heavy, um, look, but the moral of the story is, these are right off of a Willys Jeep with the off-road package. Not all of them have this, and a lot of them have the Firestone tire mud train. This is a BF Goodrich mud train. I prefer these slightly, um, but I'll be honest with you, I haven't run them on the highway yet, so they might be a little too noisy for my preference. Um, so I might be totally wrong about that. But we do get a 17 inch wheel, same um, size, 17, not an 18, um, that our, our base series have. This is an aluminum wheel though, so it's a little bit lighter. And this mud train is going to give us a lot more grip. It's about half an inch taller than the tire we have right now. We have 32s on it now. This is about a 32 and a half. For size, these guys are, let's see, that are C range, which is going to be, means they're going to be stiffer sidewalls, which is good for uh, puncture resistance, but it means they're going to ride a little bit worse. These are 255, 75, 17s, and they are a three ply sidewall. That just means things are going to be beefy and they're going to get it done. And look at that tread pattern. 
We might miss our Dueler HTs because they're so quiet on the highway. And we have a trip coming up that's gonna be a lot of highway miles, so this might be problematic, but we're gonna find out. So, moral of the story is we're gonna make this thing ride higher, probably ride rougher and be noisy on the highway, so it should be a Jeep thing. Um, we've got one last surprise mod that I'm not gonna show you till the very end, mostly a surprise for Craig. So let's get into it and start bolting these things on. All right, we've got our springs out. These are the original sport springs, and these are the diesel Rubicon springs, and they look to be almost identical in height. Um, the one thing we did notice is that there's more coils going on on the Rubicon and they're definitely thicker. Camera may not pick that up, but if you look at the, the end cutouts, the th uh, thickness of the Rubicon spring is a lot more. Uh, it feels like it's about 20% thicker and when I go to push on it, it feels like it has more dynamic range, but I'm just guessing with the wrist. We'll see what it is to drive, but that's the difference to the naked eye. Now with the old and with the new. All right, Brian, you ready? Let's do it. This is after we put the heavy duty, well, I'm sorry, heavy duty, diesel Rubicon Springs. We're at 37 and an eighth or a quarter, somewhere There's around there. 37 and a quarter for yes. my eyes. Yeah, yeah, 37 and, you know, 3 sixteenths, whatever. Point is, we gained, we we're at 35 and a and half. half. So almost two inches. Almost two inches, a little less, but a little, yeah. Which is what we're hoping for. That's quite a bit. Okay, rear. Rear. 30 even prior now with the Eco Diesel Springs. We are at 38. And I'd say and a half. Yeah, so, like, yeah it'll make it even. Yeah. yeah. So we gained about a half inch in the rear. All right, we're not going to talk about all the goodies there. This is not a, a hill test. This is a look, we're updating on the mods, long term test on the Gladiator. Let's see what the springs with the height and the tires with a little more height and grip get us. Traction off. Slippage. Right, so getting lots of slippage there. Okay. Again, so hang on, let's talk real quick. Definitely a lot of slippage you can see right there. A little, you know, gonna break those tires in. It smells great. Mm, smells um, good. Uh, we, Brian, we're yeah. in the same hole we dug last week is what we're dealing with. Same hole. Right. And then also, um, I was it's gonna a, say something I a, can't it's remember. It's a taller tire and there's more leverage there. Oh. Um, I'm having to slip this clutch more than last week. Well, the other thing I was going to say, again, normal off-road situation in this environment, we would air down. Yeah, we'd also momentum up this too. We would. We'd do a little momentum and air down. I think air down alone would almost get you past this right here. Probably. But so. for the sake of science, we're going to leave it at stock PSI numbers, just like we do all yes, the hill tests. Yes. So I think at this point, um, we tried traction on and off invertedly. Yeah, it didn't work. matter. Um, let's do four high. Uh, the, the clutch warning light's going to come on, I'm going to say right now. It's going to, because i got to slip it a lot. So. Okay, let's, let's see. Full drive is engaged. Okay, we are in four high. We got power to the front now. Let's see what happens. See if we scrape any. Oh, a little bit, but not as bad. All right, Brian. Well, uh, still scraped a tad, but you didn't less. need four low. Well, in the, in the, I'm going to show you. The warning light came on as the rear axle came up the hill. It went <laughs> bing. And by the way, Going up the hill, I never fully let off the clutch because I can't maintain that low of a speed. So I'll tell you, if we do at idle in first gear, we're already momentuming up the hill and I'm trying to avoid that. All right, Brian, so what we're gonna try now, there's one thing we can try. We can try four low because we mm -hmm. wanna see if we go a little slower with more control, yep. not burning the clutch up. Can we not suspension bounce that control arm? Oh, maybe we avoid some compression. You, did, you barely touched it, but we had a more, a little more speed this time. I bumped it a little bit. Yeah, okay, let's try that. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, we're in four low now. See if we can crawl up this and not bump that control arm a little bit. I think there's a little higher idle, so it's easier to creep. You can see no problem here. Easy over. A little bit in the same spots, but barely. All right, Brian, so for low, gives it a little bit higher idle, a little easier to creep. Yeah, um, by the way, I had the clutch fully dissing or unpressed the whole time. Wow. It, that was, it just it crawls basically really idled good, up. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Now I was giving a little gas to keep it okay. alive, but it can crawl at one mile an hour. Very good. That's really impressive. So still a little bit of a scrape on that part of that fuel tank and the control arm, but okay. not near as much. It's more of a brush than a scrape, I would say. It was a scrape last time. Definitely sure. made a difference um, for a 137 inch wheelbase. That's excursion, by the way. That's Ford excursion wheelbase. That's not bad at all. No, I'm impressed. And we've got one thing left to test. Yes, let's go try that out. Zero 60, baby. Oh, baby, oh, baby, let's do this. You know what they say, Craig. What's that? 
that mud trains are just the only way to go. Do they? Yeah. Oh, the kids say it all the time. Oh, okay. Well, they must be right. It's a sport, but also now it's kind of a Willis sport. <laughs> Let's see what the KM2s do, baby. Wheel spin. Oh, okay. okay. Good thing you're scratch. Come on, 6K. Bang it. Okay, all right. Okay, with me in the car, I am surprised by this number. Are you? Well, hey. before you say it, what did you think it was going to be beforehand? Well, hang on. Last time it was 7.8. Yes, it was. On our best run, 7.81. Yes. yes. Beforehand, I thought it would uh, be around 8 flat. Okay. You're, and you're I, I told you you'd be a miracle worker if you got it under 8. You're being very optimistic. I appreciate that. So, with me in the car, we got 8.38. 8.38 with you in the car, and keep in mind, we've gone um, more than half an inch taller in actual tire height, which effectively reduces our rear axle ratio. Yeah, uh, it's like a 350 now, maybe. Yeah, basically, you know, it's yeah. like a 373. And we've also added weight on yes. every corner. So how yes. much did we add? We added 15 pounds per tire, basically. Oh, that's a lot. That's and Because that's rotational mass. Yes. So imagine 15 pounds added to the drive shaft or the flywheel to try and rotate up. Yeah. That's a lot. We did a bunch of things to make it worse. Right. Do you want to know what I got without you in it? Uh, yes. 7.64. What? 7.64. No, like I got faster? Yes. And I can tell <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know. And I can tell you how it happened. We, uh, uh, I, your theory. Well, my theory. I had like, We talked beforehand. Yeah. Previously, before we did any modifications, the top of second gear at Redline was 59 miles an hour, and it wouldn't trick uh, the GPS sensor because mm -hmm. we haven't hit 60 yet. Yeah. And so, even though indicated was saying 60, yeah. it wasn't actually on the GPS. Because that half inch higher rear height, it now tops. It'll go further. Right. It's year. like 61 miles an hour, <laughs> and it captures the GPS. So, so that's just. There's because no because you're a slow shift. shifter. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> I am on the edge of what this thing will take. All right, Brian, we're we've wrapped up. Uh, there's a Land Rover behind us, but here's the Jeep. We yeah. need to wrap up yeah. all the things we've done until we finally got a chance to finish everything. Yeah. And we're actually out in the middle of uh, testing it in the wild. But uh, right. What do we finish up with? So we kind of haphazardly filmed all the install stuff and then rushed to go on this trip to test it all. So let's start with what, what we have done. Um, first of all, we've got the sex appeal is right here on the hella oh, yeah, lights because yeah, yeah. they're hella cool. And these pop off, and these aren't the best brightest lights because we wanted to keep them halogen no, and portable. Yeah. But it is like having three high beams, which at night is better than what it came with for sure. And at night, Brian, it, it illuminates the hood <laughs> right. really well. That bothers you more than me because um, I just looked down the road and I realized it is still lighting the woods better. But so. put the cover back on real quick. Okay, sure, sure. That's really all that matters, that right there. Right, yeah, now yeah. Now you're in business. That's, really, the, that's why you buy these. You don't even need to wire it, really. I'm not sure why we wired it up anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, we did it. Um, the next thing we did was we installed the Rubicon diesel springs. And I'm glad we waited to film the closing because we've driven it some now. The internet will tell you these are way too stiff. You shouldn't use them without a diesel because the diesel is like three to 400 pounds heavier on the nose in particular. Well, what we got is what we wanted. We got a lift out of it. So the gas the, uh, Rubicon spring on a Sport Gladiator is good for almost an inch and a half of lift. We've gotten two inches out of this because of the increased spring rate and weight capacity of the diesel on a gas application. It does ride a little rougher. I'd say a pinch rougher than a half ton pickup, but nowhere near a three quarter ton pickup. Um, I think it's fine. And also if you're gonna put in a winch on the front and a bumper, it's probably gonna be perfection. Well, and, and, yeah, and the other thing is, Brian, w once you start loading it down, you start putting a bunch of gear for your trip that you're going on, Right. then it actually rides kind of where it should be. So it's kind of, it's almost a trade off and a compromise. Right. Maybe if you're doing a lot of this, put these on. So. And, and also we talked about aftermarket springs usually ride too rough anyways. Right. This is an OE option that was free for us and most people to keep it with an OEM designed spring. I mean, that's not such a bad deal. Ron, we've got another monitor to talk about. Well, we, well, hey, we missed that up. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. More. Oh. Wheels and tires. These are the KM2s that we got off of a Willy Spec Wrangler or Gladiator Sport. Um, look, they're noisy on the highway. There's no other way to put it. Uh, these are actually these tread blocks you can hear where you're on cement like backing out of a parking yeah, spot. Yeah, like each one. Do, each one do, you go do, 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 at, at like one to two miles an hour. It's real loud. Up to about 40 miles an hour, it's still real loud. Above about 50, it starts to just blend with what wind noise this thing has and it just doesn't seem to be yeah, a problem not, anymore. Not bad. So on the highway, it's better than I thought it was. What are your thoughts? Yeah, basically the same. Um, they're, I would go with more all train instead of a mud train, okay. but uh, they're okay. Yeah, they're fine, but the 32 inch tires and, uh, or 32 and a half, I'm sorry on this. And so that's helped us out with um, just getting over things pretty well. Also, it's kind of like the hell of light. Right. Who cares? It looks cool. <laughs> he got it. And the wheels do look really good. I'm happy with the wheels a lot. Um, let's keep going on down. 
other things we've done to it. You've actually put in the J scan. Yes, yes, right here. Hold on. So, yeah, explain table. this real quick. I'm gonna explain this. Uh, it's part of my mess, but uh, I've got the cable in here, and. For the J-Scan app, you actually have to do the security bypass override. There's a little switch underneath the um, uh, steering wheel, basically yeah, the steering right. column, or next yep. to the steering column. And you plug them into here with your little Bluetooth adapter, and then you can change things. And Brian, let's go back to the front, because the biggest thing I've changed, I want to show you, is the most annoying thing in every vehicle in the world is you can do fog lights with regular high beams. No, regular lights, but not high beams. I'm sorry. Yeah. Regular lights with fog lights, you can do that. But once you go to high beams, you lose the fog lights. Right. Which I don't understand because there's high beams, there's no cars, like I should be able to get all the Dude, power. give me all the juice. So one of the things you can do on that J-Scan app, which is cool, okay, now headlights or high beams on, I can keep the fog lights on. That's really cool in yep. conjunction with the hella lights. I can see a lot for halogen lamps. That's pretty good. That's a huge deal. Brian, also the J-Scan, one of the things these tires did when we put them on is, uh, well, we got a good deal on them, which means we also didn't get TPMS or sensors in them. Yep. So it's throwing the TPMS light. I basically just said, hey, uh, ignore that. We don't really care. That's nice. Yeah, you can deactivate it and there's no lights in the dash. I like yes. that a lot. Uh, there's one other thing we did, Craig, I want to come back here. This is actually a gift from a uh, sponsor on Amazon. Oh, yes. I'll put their link down below, uh, so if you guys want it for yourself, but it's actually really reasonably priced, and it's this bed mat. It's been great, because we have destroyed it on this trip so yeah, far. Yeah, we've just thrown stuff in the back. And, and it hasn't mattered. It just doesn't matter, and if you don't want to do like, uh, maybe you don't want to invest in a bed liner, or you don't want it to be grippy all the time. Sometimes you want things to slide in the bed. This is kind of the best of the worlds. I would actually get one of these if it were hours to keep. It's a great conference, and look how good it fits. Like, it's actually really oh, yeah. good fit. It's, a, was, it's definitely a laser scan to go in here. That was like, my first thing that I was surprised. Yeah. I was like, wow, that fits really good. I've gotten some more premium ones for other trucks in the yeah. past, and they curl in the corners and things like that. This one fits really good. I've those DZ ones. They're like a name brand. Mm -hmm. I've had those things flop all around. This doesn't flap at speed at all. It's great. And it's thinner. It's made of like a thicker weather tech, if you think of it that way. Um, Oh yeah, last thing, Craig, which I know we've talked about this already, but we haven't actually hit these yet, but the rock rails that were also free, just make it look right. If you have a sport, if you do nothing else, add those. It makes a big difference. And we're about to go on a trail. We're actually on location in the Ozarks. No, we're not money launderers. We're just here to enjoy the forest, and we want to check it out and see how it does. So on the next episode, you'll hear all about that. Thanks for watching. Anything else, Craig? That's it. Subscribe, like. Yeah, all that. See you next time.